only one country has ever built nuclear weapons and then destroyed them, South Africa. But the decision to nuclearize in the 70s and denuclearize in the 90s has been shrouded in mystery. Here's what we know for sure. In 1974, the South African white minority government decided it wanted to build nuclear weapons of its own, but that it would be top secret. Six Hiroshima-like atom bombs were built at a cost of $800 million, each weighing a ton, and with the potential to wreck a large city and wipe out 100,000 people. In 1989, South Africa's president, F.W. de Klerk, decided South Africa would get rid of its nuclear weapons. In 1991, the country signed the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons Treaty, and two years later, F.W. de Klerk acknowledged that South Africa had created and destroyed weapons of mass destruction. But that leaves a lot of unanswered questions, which wrap the facts in mystery. How, for instance, did South Africa develop atom bombs without anyone noticing? Some say it used the cover of a civilian nuclear energy program, with the government accumulating expertise and hardware from abroad and uranium from its own mines. An investigation by the Guardian newspaper alleged that in exchange for yellow cake uranium, Israel sent South Africa 30 grams of tritium that boosts the explosive power of nuclear weapons. Reports also say work on the bombs was done in a windowless structure outside the country's capital at the edge of a test range for drivers. Officials say physicists and engineers who worked on the project had to be South African-born citizens or living in the country for at least 15 years. Over 1,000 people worked on the nuclear program, but only 10 people in the country knew all of its secrets. But why was South Africa building nuclear weapons anyway? In the 70s, it was a pariah state, isolated from the rest of the world because of its human rights abuses. South Africa's white minority government was facing increasing pressure from black liberation movements trying to end apartheid. And they worried that the Soviets, who were backing guerrilla movements in other African countries, would expand into South Africa. F.W. de Klerk has said in a recent interview that if the country came under attack, the government planned to detonate a test device and threatened to use the weapon until the USA or Britain or France came to its aid. As South Africa's newly elected president in 1989, he decided that South Africa would dismantle its nuclear weapons. So why the change of direction? De Klerk later said it was because the Soviet Union was not a threat anymore, but many critics don't buy that. By 1989, the apartheid government was negotiating with imprisoned ANC leader Nelson Mandela. The transition from the white minority government to a democratic black majority government had begun. Many believed that the apartheid government didn't want a new black government to inherit its nuclear weapons. According to some government officials, the bombs were dismantled and their highly enriched uranium loaded piece by piece into the trunk of a Toyota sedan and ferried in a number of trips to a secure facility. Reports say the final parts of the bombs were destroyed and their designs were burnt in 1991. But what happened to the explosives that were in the bombs? While South Africa still has 485 pounds of the enriched uranium locked in a vault in a nuclear research facility, and it's been a bone of contention between the US and South Africa since. US President Barack Obama appealed to South African President Jacob Zuma to convert it into reactor fuel in 2013. U.S. officials say they are worried that the explosives could be stolen by militants or fall into the wrong hands. In 2007, raiders breached the nuclear research facility and came close to finding the explosives but were stopped. South Africa dismissed it as a burglary, but U.S. officials say the assailants were after the enriched uranium. The country has refused to let go of the nuclear material. The mystery, like the leftover uranium, looks set to have a life long into the future.